Welcome to Chinese Finance and Economy Briefing. The content of the briefing includes China, Europe, and the Great Electric Vehicle Race. How China is moving to boost demand and achieve higher growth. China's property crisis also hitting Southeast Asia, regional body says. Capvision says rectification complete after China crackdown. China's top art investor amassed a big collection. Now he's selling. China, Europe, and the Great Electric Vehicle Race. Diplomat. The European Union, EU, is facing challenges in developing its electric vehicle, EV, sector due to conflicting interests from the EU automotive sector and concerns about overdependence on imported materials and components required to build EVs. In contrast, China has heavily planned and subsidized its EV sector, leading to the production of cheaper and more compact EVs compared to the EU. The EU has recently launched an investigation into Chinese EVs in the EU market, with the potential for tariffs to be raised on Chinese EVs. France and Italy have openly welcomed the probe, while Germany's stance is mixed. Smaller EU member states are concerned that the investigation and any subsequent measures may prioritize German and French interests. The challenges faced by the EV industry reflect the broader situation of China-EU relations, characterized by deep trade ties and political divergences. The EU currently relies on China to meet its environmental targets, but hitting the brakes on its ambitious environmental policy could impact the overall image of the EU as a leading global environmental actor. The EU's response to Chinese EVs will be a microcosm of the future of China-EU relations. How China is moving to boost demand and achieve higher growth. South China Morning Post. China's economic growth has been slowing, but the country is still well positioned to achieve higher growth than most developed economies. The key to success lies in policy, with fiscal and monetary expansion necessary if growth and inflation remain sluggish. China's government has taken a cautious approach to growth over the past decade, setting conservative targets in order to pursue reforms. However, there is reason to hope that Chinese policymakers will implement a more aggressive macroeconomic policy approach focused on boosting effective demand and growth in the future. China's property crisis also hitting Southeast Asia, regional body says. South China Morning Post. The ASEAN Plus 3 Macroeconomic Research Office has predicted that China's economy will grow at a rate lower than expected, with growth reaching 5% compared to a July forecast of 5.5%. The office also warned that China's property crisis is spreading to other parts of Asia. The research body's forecasts align with those of international banks and other multilateral financial organizations, all of which have lowered their growth forecasts for China this year. A slowdown in China's economy could result in a 1.6 percentage point fall in the expansion of other Asian economies due to decreases in trade, investment, and tourism. Capvision says rectification complete after China crackdown. Financial Times. Chinese consultancy Capvision has announced that Chinese authorities have approved its rectification following a crackdown on foreign consultancies and due diligence groups. State media reported that multiple offices of Capvision were raided by security agents earlier this year, raising concerns that international consultants posed a national security threat. Capvision has since overhauled its compliance system under government guidance. The crackdown on consultancies has made it more difficult for foreign companies to operate in China, as they rely on consultants to navigate the local regulatory environment. China's top art investor amassed a big collection. Now he's selling. New York Times. Chinese art collectors Liu Qian and Wang Wei have sent 40 artworks for auction at Sotheby's in Hong Kong, surprising the art world. The sale includes a Modigliani painting that Sotheby's sold for $42.8 million in 2015, a Magritte painting, and a David Hockney painting. The auction will be the largest from a single owner that the auction house has held in Asia and is the first large public auction the couple has held for their art, though it is common for art collectors in China to do considerable private trading. The auction comes at a delicate time for China's economy as growth is slowing and Chinese stocks have been declining since early May. EU formally opens anti-subsidies probe into EVs made in China. Bloomberg. The European Union has launched an anti-subsidies investigation into electric vehicles, EVs, manufactured in China. The investigation will focus on new battery-powered EVs and alleged subsidies granted by the Chinese state. The probe aims to determine whether these subsidies have allowed Chinese EVs to gain an unfair market share in the EU to the detriment of the union industry. The investigation will cover the period from October 2022 to September 2023, and provisional measures such as countervailing duties could be imposed in the next nine months. How China's BYD became Tesla's biggest threat. Wall Street Journal. 
Chinese automaker BYD is fast becoming a major player in the electric vehicle, EV, market and is now the world's second largest seller of EVs, behind only Tesla. The company sold 431,603 fully electric cars in Q3 2022 and is on track to sell 3.6 million total vehicles this year. BYD's rise can largely be attributed to the ambition of its founder, Wang Chuanfu, and his partner, Stella Lee, Wang, known for his ruthless cost-cutting, and Lee, responsible for overseas business and sales, are described as the Mr. Inside and Ms. Outside of the company. BYD has made significant inroads into Europe and Southeast Asia, capitalizing on its cost-competitive Chinese-made EVs. The company aims to double its export sales to 400,000 vehicles next year and is already a top EV seller in markets such as Australia, Sweden, Thailand, and Israel. However, US and European policymakers are concerned about the rise of BYD and other low-cost Chinese competition and are working to bolster their domestic industries. Expansion outside of China is crucial for BYD as the domestic car sales market slows down and competition intensifies. Wang founded BYD in 1995 as a battery maker and initially copied products from Japanese leaders, such as Sanio and Sony. The company's first car, the F3, was a gasoline-powered sedan that closely resembled a Toyota Corolla. BYD's success drew the attention of Warren Buffett, who purchased a 10% stake in the company in 2008. BYD has faced challenges in competing with lower-cost EV competitors and struggled with range issues and quality concerns. However, its recent introduction of the Blade battery, which maximizes power output in a limited space, has revitalized the company. BYD's global sales more than quadrupled from 2020 to 2022, and it is now China's top seller of new energy vehicles. The company plans to expand into commercial vehicles, including electric trucks, as part of its aggressive push to establish a presence overseas. Alibaba spin-off can deliver two recovery packages. Reuters Breaking Views Sanyo Smart Logistics Network, the logistics unit of Alibaba, is reportedly considering an IPO in Hong Kong that could value the company at $10 billion or more. Sanyo, which is profitable and has reduced its dependence on Alibaba to around 30% of revenue, is expected to raise at least $1 billion in the listing, which would be Hong Kong's largest in nearly a year. A successful IPO for Tsainya would demonstrate that Alibaba's restructuring plans are on track following the departure of CEO Daniel Zhang and could encourage other companies to go public in Hong Kong. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Dr. Six, your resident observer from the Six Degrees World, here to bring you the latest news and analysis from around the globe. Today, we have quite the lineup of stories, so let's dive right in. First up, we have the great electric vehicle race between China and Europe. While China has been heavily investing in and subsidizing its EV sector, Europe is facing challenges due to conflicting interests and concerns about overdependence on imported materials. The EU has launched an investigation into Chinese EVs, which could potentially lead to tariffs on these vehicles. This situation reflects the broader China-EU relations and could impact the EU's image as a global environmental leader. Moving on, we have news about China's efforts to boost its economic growth. Despite a slowing growth rate, China is well positioned to achieve higher growth than most developed economies. The key lies in implementing more aggressive macroeconomic policies focused on boosting effective demand and growth. So, there's hope for a brighter economic future in China. But there's also a property crisis in China that is impacting Southeast Asia. The ASEAN Plus 3 Macroeconomic Research Office predicts lower than expected growth in China which could have a ripple effect on other Asian economies. Decreases in trade, investment, and tourism could lead to a slowdown in the expansion of these economies. It's a challenging situation that needs to be monitored closely. In other news, Chinese consultancy Capvision has announced that it has completed its rectification following a crackdown by Chinese authorities. This crackdown has made it more difficult for foreign companies to operate in China. So, if you're planning on doing business in China, you better be prepared to navigate the local regulatory environment on your own. Now, let's talk about art. Chinese art collectors Liu Qian and Wang Wei are shaking up the art world by auctioning off 40 artworks at Sotheby's in Hong Kong. This auction includes pieces by renowned artists like Modigliani, Magritte, and Hockney. It's a bold move, considering the delicate state of China's economy. But hey, art collectors gotta do what art collectors gotta do. And speaking of auctions, the European Union has formally opened an anti-subsidies probe into electric vehicles made in China. The investigation will focus on alleged subsidies granted by the Chinese state, with the aim of determining whether these subsidies have allowed Chinese EVs to gain an unfair market share in the EU. 
the outcome of this investigation could have significant implications for the EV industry. Now, let's talk about China's BYD, which is becoming a major player in the electric vehicle market and is even giving Tesla a run for its money. BYD has sold a staggering number of EVs and is making significant inroads into Europe and Southeast Asia. However, policymakers in the US and Europe are worried about the rise of low-cost Chinese competition and are working to protect their domestic industries. It's a battle for the EV throne, and BYD is definitely a contender. Last but not least, we have news about Sinyao Smart Logistics Network, the logistics unit of Alibaba. Sinyao is reportedly considering an IPO in Hong Kong, which could be a game-changer for Alibaba and the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. A successful IPO for Tsainyao would demonstrate that Alibaba's restructuring plans are on track and could encourage other companies to go public in Hong Kong. Well, that wraps up today's news. I hope you enjoyed this whirlwind tour around the world. Remember, these stories are just the tip of the iceberg, and there's much more happening out there. Now, it's time for you to join the conversation. What are your thoughts on these stories? Do you have any questions? I'm all ears. So, go ahead and share your ideas and let's keep the discussion going. Thank you for joining me today, and until next time, stay curious and keep exploring the Six Degrees world. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the Six Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of six do brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the six do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize six do brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, sixdobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email.